Hello everybody and welcome, it is True Down here, so glad that you can tune into another video. Today we are playing some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Live. Now I believe this is episode 6 or episode 7 of this series, so we are doing quite well and we have just reached round 90, like literally just now. So yeah, that is absolutely amazing, we are nearly there, getting pretty hyped at the minute. Just not got to lose my mind doing this same strategy over and over and over and over and over again, but it's all good. Going very, very quickly as well for this round 100 run. I think the world record is like 4 hours though. How someone does that, I will never know. But yeah, 6-7 hour runs, really not too bad at all. I've actually forgotten to call in the Civil Protector, so that may be something we need to do. Because the best thing about the Civil Protector is, is that if you do go down, then you don't lose your Quick Revive. So that's always super handy to have an extra Quick Revive. If you look at how many zombies the sword actually takes out, it takes out just a ridiculous amount. I wish it actually showed your, like, sword kills online. That would be a good stat to see. I also wish that they did that for, like, Derizendraken as well, and the Giant. Just like the Wonder Wolf stats and, you know, the bows stats and stuff. I wish they did something like that. But yeah, like I always say, just the hardest part about this strategy is just getting set up, I believe. And then again, it can feel quite daunting at first when you try this strategy. It does feel a bit weird. You're like, you're trading in such an enclosed space. You're not quite sure how it's going to handle out. But I think it's the best strategy you can have for Shadows. I don't think there's a better one than this. Okay, so Alchemical has just run out. Let's just go and not get the trap in this time. I'm going to hug the walls like this. And as you can see, they train up quite well. If you can find a gap, get through. If you can't, you've got your Widow's Wine to protect you. So it doesn't really do that much damage to you at all. Now you call in the trap. We're going to get some turn zombies working in and then just train again. Try your best to fit through gaps and not have to use Widow's Wine a stupid amount of times like I'm doing at the minute. Obviously, Widow's Wine makes your shield go quicker, but if you don't have a shield, then you don't really lose anything, do you, if you get hit a lot of times. As long as you can make it back and be efficient, you've not really got anything to lose. No way are these the last zombies. Look at this Draken. Doing so much damage. Okay, that was kind of risky, actually. Round 91, let's go. There you go, and you get a lovely train like this. There we go, that's what I wanted to try and show you. So you get a nice train, you don't get hit that much, and you get a couple of zombies each now and then. You can just kind of chuck down a Widow's Wine Grenade, if you will, then get your Wonder Weapon on them. And look at all them grenades you pick up as well. It's really nice and satisfying. We're going to call in the sword again and just simply repeat. By the end of this strategy, when you've gone around this circle like 500 and odd times, probably thousands of times, you may be a bit insane by the end of it, but at least you've got to a high round. I am definitely not getting that death machine on round 91. That would be me going down so quickly. Just got to stay back here and hope that I don't accidentally pick it up. Not risking that at all. It'll do way too little damage as well, but we'll get the double point. It's quite bad that we don't even have 500k at the minute, but I did spend a, quite a lot on getting alchemical. Sometimes I run all the way down to here, believe it or not. Just run all the way down as far as you can. That seems to work out very well. And as you can tell, not really getting hit that much at all. Until I say it, obviously, we do get hit. But you just gotta always make sure you're calling your sword as soon as you can as well. You don't want to be wasting any Wonder Weapon ammo. Every single bullet counts at this stage in the game. I wonder how this strategy would play if we didn't have stamina up. I was kind of thinking, I kind of wanted Mule Kick. And I wanted to see what perk I could exchange for it. And I was thinking either Widow's Wine or stamina up. But I'm not sure which one would be the best. I think those stamina up would be essential on a training spot like this. I'm not sure if anyone's tried it without. But I think this has got to be essential to have stamina up on surely but really it's not that much excessive running is it to be honest like really a lot of the work comes down to your sword and you could be pretty much stationary almost with that it's not like you have to sprint too badly. But I think stamina up's pretty much a given. You know when I used to play Black Ops 2, I would always never get stamina up at all and never used to like it. I don't know why. That shows how much of a noob I used to be. But one of my favourite perks ever was Vulture's Aid from Buried. I loved Buried so much. That was the highest round I ever got to on Black Ops 2 because there was a camping strategy you could do with the Paralyzer, which was, like, amazing. I only got to, like, round 50-odd with it, but it was really, really, like, impressive at the time. I thought that was pretty good. I don't know why on earth I just called in the sword when I used the Alchemist chemical. I have no idea why I did that. But I'm just playing super carefully now because I do not want to go down this close. That's why I'm calling in alchemical quite frequently as well, instead of going to the rifter train. I definitely think that the perk setup I have got is actually probably my favourite completely. But anyway guys, if you have enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and comment. Eight rounds away, we can do it. Thank you guys for all the support, it means so much to me, and I'll hopefully see you guys soon.